building. But he sent me a message <clears throat> just a little while ago and said, Pastor Mike, we were doing evangelism in the neighborhoods focused primarily on bedridden people, the sick and the elderly. Our church held days of fasting and prayer. Today the harvest was 128 professions of faith. That's just crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> That's how wide open the gospel is in Cuba. And you wouldn't think that it would be, but it is. You just have to follow around the right way. We are live on there now, so we welcome anybody that's going to be watching us tonight as well. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of neat to see um, how things are happening and still continue to progress uh, even after we're gone from, from there, the work that's being done <clears throat> there, and the people are so open for the gospel um, to be able to hear, hear a word. And, and from what I gather and having been there um, three times now, as long as you don't go out of bounds like you, in, in areas you're not, ways you're not supposed to, government doesn't care. <clears throat> they just let you, you know, you can do what needs to be done as long as you follow the legal, follow their guidelines. And, and I never have, I haven't found that to be any, any issue at all. Anxious to go back and, and, and uh, be with them again. Pastor told me last time I was there, he said, next time you come, be more evangelistic, more evangelistic sermons. I mean, okay, I don't know how, many, how much more I could do, but uh, <clears throat> I'll do what I can. We are in 1 Kings chapter 21 <clears throat> tonight, and um, you bring your glasses. I tell you, you know, we've been... One of the things that we're going to work on in that men's rally that's coming, Tony, is about bringing your glasses to church with you so you can read your Bible. <clears throat> First Kings 21. I don't know how you read your Bible like that, man. I, oh, it's not coming up? <laughs> you may have to get a real book out then. <laughs> Well, did you get it? Did it finally come up? Uh oh. Well, we've been we've been the reason this has taken a little bit longer, and and to get through this the ending of of uh, First Kings, because it's focused so much on on uh, Ahab and Elijah and and what they've got going on. It's just it's just a whole lot that's happening right there, and. Um, and, and so I kind of wanted to go through those a little bit more, and, and then we'll probably go back to some more scanning over some, uh, some of the chapters. In chapter 21, what it shows us is the extent of, of Jezebel. We've all, I would think most everybody here has heard of Jezebel, uh, queen. She was a queen, uh, Ahab's wife. And, and you're really going to see the extent of her wickedness right there. And it's a familiar story. At least for most people, it's a familiar story. Um, it's, it's almost about how, how, when you look at her life and what she did, it's about condoning bad behavior. And the, the chapter begins with, uh, with Ahab uh, asking uh, for the vineyard of a man named Naboth. Uh, he wants the vineyard. It's close to where he is. Now, so we get into this, and, and so, uh, okay, who are my readers tonight? Just, just so I, you're a reader, you're a reader. You guys are reader. Are you guys readers tonight? Can be. I'm just asking. I'm making sure. I have, you know, I've stuck my foot in my mouth a time or two, and then, you know, somebody said, oh, you can't. So I'm just making sure where we are with this. So we're in chapter 21. So, Corey, if you want to get it started for us, the first two verses will be fine. Yep. 
Go ahead, just go ahead and do verse 3 right there as well. There we go. Okay. So there you are. Ahab, there's, there's a vineyard that's right there beside the palace where they live. And <coughs> Naboth is the owner of that. It's a family inheritance. And Ahab wants it. He's decided he wants a vegetable garden to put there. So his intent is to take the vineyard or buy the vineyard from, from uh, Naboth, tear it up, and plant green beans or whatever right there. That's, that's the intent. Now, the thing about it is, is that um, he, he refused this. Um, he, 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 Naboth said it was against, because it was against the customary law to sell the family's inheritance. You know, if you, you get land or whatever, it would be against the law for you to sell that. You, were, you weren't supposed to sell it. So, um, <clears throat> okay, everybody stop and look. Debbie's here now, so... It wasn't, it wasn't, the camera wasn't working last week. That was the problem. Something was out of whack, but they've got it whacked back in now, so it's good. <clears throat> so we're, we're, we are live, and, um, <clears throat> and the camera is right here. So you just made Facebook. First Kings 21, your turn to read. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, we just read the first three verses. Corey just read the first three verses of this for us. So that sets up what's going on. Naboth wants uh, nothing to do with Ahab, with Ahab's money. Or <clears throat> if I, when I look back in the history, <clears throat> I'm, I'm remembering a, a story that takes place where David wants to make a sacrifice, wants to offer sacrifice. And they come to a threshing floor. And, and David wants to, he, he's offering to buy the threshing floor. And the guy that owns the threshing floor says, no, you can have it. It's yours. And, and David says, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. It's a, there was a respect thing that was there. You know, David was such a respected king that this is, that the uh, threshing floor that he, that he wanted, the owner said, was, here, you take it. Just take it. Take, take the wood, take the oxen. Yeah, here's the sacrifice. All that there. It was really respect for King David. <clears throat> of course, King David, if he wouldn't take that, he did buy it and, and used it as a, a place to make a sacrifice before the Lord. That was when they were bringing the, I think, the, bringing the Ark of the Covenant back. And he made, at any rate, here we have another, another a scenario right here where, the king, Ahab, is asking for a vineyard that's next door to the, to the palace where he's living. And Naboth says, ain't going to happen. Not giving it to you. Not selling it to you. <clears throat> Roles reversed. So out of that, Debbie, verse, <clears throat> just verse 4. Read verse 4 right there to begin with. There you go. That's the king. He got, uh, didn't get his way. And so he goes home all tore up, <clears throat> goes to bed, sullen, turns his face away from everything that's going on and doesn't want to eat. <clears throat> Look at verse, do with verse 5 right there. Okay, Jezebel's coming onto the scene. So she observed what was going on with her. He told her, and he's going to tell her what the problem is. Jordan, are you a, were you a reader? Or you were okay. All right, give us verse. Start with verse six.
Okay, go ahead and do verse 7. Go ahead and do verse 7. Okay, so there's a, here's a, you see how the story's laying out. She says, what's the matter with you? It's just like a wife coming in. What you, what's the matter with you? I don't know if, if, if any of you married guys have had that happen. Yeah. What's the matter with you today? <laughs> what's the matter? So he tells her, he's whining right here. He, you know, I didn't get my way. That's what he's basically saying. Naboth said he wasn't going to sell me his vineyard. You know, here, here's, the, you know, here's the king who's whining to his wife about what wasn't going to happen right here. And so we're going to go into a... a um, she tells him, get up. You're the king. Get up. Eat food. I'll take care of this. Now it's going to lay out. It's going to lay out for him right there. So... Um, Where were we at? You read seven, didn't you? Answer the seven. All right. Let's go to verse eight. Kyle, read verse eight for us right there. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to uh, verse nine. All right, Derek, pick up right there. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so here's what they're saying. He said, you're the king, get up and eat something. Be the man that you're supposed to be right here. Be the king that you're supposed to be. I'll take care of this. And so what she does is send, has letters written up. But she's, gonna, she's having a plot right here to have Naboth killed. She's going to have him killed. And do this, she's going to put false witnesses right there in front of him and, and, and say that he's blasphemed God and King Ahab as well. <clears throat> this lady's vicious. She's vicious. And, and, and so this is what's going to happen right there. Let's pick it back up. Um, where, did, where did I leave you? 12. Corey picked up on 12 right there. Is that, is that, or did you read 12? Did you? You read to 11. Okay, Corey, pick up on 12 and 13. You might as well finish it with 14. Okay. Just like that. Just like that. It's kind of similar here to what David had done to Uriah so that he could have Bathsheba. He says, you know, when David had, while Uriah was off fighting war and Bathsheba came, I mean, David saw Bathsheba out on the rooftop and, and bathing, and he sent for her and, and brought her to his palace, got her pregnant, sent her home, and, and then uh, she tells him, I'm with child, and he brings Uriah back and tries to have him sleep with her, and he wouldn't do it because of his warrior, the men, were, you know, they're part of his, I'm not going to defile her, I'm going to sleep in a bed while my men are out on the ground sleeping, and and he wouldn't do it. And then they, so David sent word out and said, put him in the front of the line. Do an invasion, put him in front of the line. <clears throat> and he did. And sure enough, Uriah was killed in battle. And they sent word back. And then David t- takes Bathsheba as his wife, which is, and you read about that in Psalm 51, I believe it is, where David cries out he's guilty against God and he sinned against God and God alone. So here's what's happened. Bathsheba has said, Seat Naboth in the front of the in the front of the crowd. Put him up in that prominent spot, 
And then, I, and I love, what do you, are you reading out of NIV? Is that what yours is? Yeah. <clears throat> Ronnie, two scoundrels. That's a good, that's probably a good word for that right there, two scoundrels. Mine, mine says he's brought in two wicked men. Two wicked men came in and sat opposite of him. And they testified against him. They spoke up and said that he'd been blaspheming against God and against Ahab. And, and they stoned him. They took him out and they stoned him to death. And the plan is carried out. And so um, having on there, Debbie, pick up right there where he's left off in verse 15 and 16. Yeah, go ahead. Now, what I what I find right there interesting is is um, Ahab doesn't ask any questions. <clears throat> she says he's dead. Go take possession of the vineyard. And he doesn't ask any questions. <clears throat> Probably, if I had a wife like Jezebel, I wouldn't ask any questions either. I would just, you know, thank you and go ahead. And that's what he did. That's what took place. He didn't hesitate at all according to the text. Now, we don't know for sure if he asked or knew. what He, he may have known the whole plot that was going on, but he didn't. when we read the Scripture, again, we're given the understanding. He's just following orders now. He's taking, and he's going to assume the role of king. I don't know whether Naboth had children or not, because if he had children... By right, they would be taking possession of that land, of that vineyard. But what we read right there is that he did. They, he took possession of the vineyard at the expense of another man's life. And, uh, and as normal, this is what's going to happen. The Lord is going to have a front row seat to this. And um, he's going to make a pronouncement about it. Jordan, pick up there in verse 17, uh, 18, um, and 19. Yep, there you go. Go down to me and the king of Israel in the morning when he heard that he was now in Naboth's vineyard, for he was gone because of the anger of the king and of the Lord's servant. Have you not murdered a man with greed and property? Do the same to him. Give to him the Lord's servant for he was anxious. Okay, all right. So here's what Elijah tells him. You see this? <clears throat> Elijah warns him. The same evil that, the, that came upon Naboth that they had done is what's going to happen to him. It's going to take place. And in other words, you're going you're to reap the reward of what you've done. You're going to die. And the dogs are going to come and lick the blood from off the ground where you lay. And, and so... Um, uh, in let's see, verse 20, 21. Kyle, read that if you would, please. Wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. Read 20 and 21. I'm going to wipe you out. That's what God is saying to him. I'm going to wipe you out. I'm going to eradicate your existence and everybody that's connected with you, whether they're a slave or free, whoever it may be, whatever's part of your household, they're all going to be wiped out. That's a, that's a strong declaration that's coming from Elijah right there by the name of the Lord. And, and so um, <clears throat> 22, 3, and 4, Derek, if you would, 22, and 23, and 24. Jeroboam. Yep. Yeah. 
One more. Yeah, shoo. Don't you just love these names? I mean, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I work on these names at times. I, I'm, I practice on them and practice on them, and, and, then, they're, and then there are times you just go, oh. you got to have a different tongue for it to come out of your mouth the way it's supposed to right there because it just doesn't come out like it's supposed to. But here, there's the declaration that's being made because God is coming down. Elijah warns Ahab what's going to happen to him, and he's also passed, uh, per what you've read right there, he's passed sentence on Jezebel as well. This is going to happen to her too. And <clears throat> verse 25 says, Still there was no one like Ahab who devoted himself to do what, is, what was evil in the Lord's sight because, because of his wife Jezebel incited him. <clears throat> And verse 26, he committed the most detestable acts by following idols as the Amorites had, whom the Lord uh, had dispossessed before the Israelites. What you're going to have right here, and uh, it's probably going to be up here somewhere. Uh, I haven't, um, uh, Ahab is credited. Up until this point, when a king comes on and he's evil, and mostly you see this in Israel. Remember, northern and southern kingdoms are split. Judah is the southern kingdom. And the ten tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Benjamin's a little, uh, one of the small tribes that's within the land of Judah in the southern kingdom. Then you have the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. All the other brothers' names are all up through there. And that's where Ahab is. He's in that land of the north part of it right there. <clears throat> all the kings that done, had done evil down through this point had been, had been compared to Jeroboam. So that he and he did evil in the sight as Jeroboam his father had done, as Jeroboam his father. Evil this, evil that. <clears throat> Until you get to Ahab. And when he talks about Ahab, Ahab is credited with being more evil than even Jeroboam was. So he's just... And, and Jezebel is right there with him. I mean, these were, these were evil people. They were evil people. And, and so uh, this is what's going on with them. Uh, Ahab heard all these words, and something's about to take place. Corey, verse 27. Uh, just finish out that chapter. Ahab heard, he heard. He heard what God was going to do, and he went weak on the, in the knees before the Lord. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, he, he began to walk humbly before, before the Lord right there, and the Lord sent Elijah back to him and said, okay, I'm not going to bring the destruction of your household. Remember what, they, remember what it was? We're going to destroy the whole household. We're going to destroy, destroy a slave and free everybody in the family. But he said, <clears throat> since he's humbled himself before the Lord right there, and so Elijah comes back and says, okay, God's not going to destroy your entire family in your lifetime. He's going to do it in your son's lifetime. He's still going to die. Ahab is still going to die a horrible death. I mean, it's still going to happen the way that it was described. But the, but the family line is not going to be wiped out until next one's down. So <clears throat> this is, this is going to take place, and it's just going to be a, um, you know, I guess if you learn anything, it pays to repent. <clears throat> it's, it's to our benefit to, to repent. There are times that we just need to, to stop and, and repent. Even if I don't feel like I've done something wrong, that, that's probably the good sign that I have. <clears throat> when I have the attitude that I'm not done anything wrong, well, that's wrong. You know, <laughs> I need to humble myself before the Lord and stay in that direction. So, um, 
Having said that, that's, that's kind of chapter 22, what's going on. <clears throat> what you read from there is, is that it cost a man his life, and the story that comes out of that is, is um, Naboth and Jezebel do evil, take what was not theirs, and, and so um, we still see God moving. Here, that's the thing. You still see God moving right here. Because all along, Israel or Judah, northern or southern kingdom, these are the Israelites, and these are God's chosen people. And he's still, he's still watching over them. He still cares about them. He still wants the best for them. <clears throat> Even though they've turned their backs on him from time and time, they still want, you know, God still wants the best. And I think that's true. Uh, that's true even now. You know, we live in a different lifestyle as Christians. We, we are followers of, of and, uh, and believers in Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of our lives. We know that to be true. <clears throat> and yet we find ourselves turning our backs on God and, and his desire for our life, the thing that he wants us to do, the direction he wants us to go. We still find that happening. And, I mean, we're all, we all fall in that category. And God will do things in our lives and put things in our lives to point us back toward him. He's going to do things. God's going to move us. And, and I, that's a good thing. It may hurt at times for that to happen, but, it's going to, but God does what needs to be done in order that we honor and, and respect and, and call upon his name. Well, let's move on. In chapter 22, we need to get, I want to get finished. Maybe. Yeah, I should. I'm not going to read, we're not going to read all of that. But what, what I want you to see out of chapter 22, it starts out, there, there is the idea here. Okay, <clears throat> just so you can see it this way. I, I showed a slide. Gaza is down in here, or the southern kingdom of Israel is down in here. Gaza is over here, Jordan, the Jordan's off through here. And Israel's right here, and Syria is right here. Okay, so it's just kind of a, a, a long strip of, of existence of people. What we have in, in chapter 22 is King Jehoshaphat is in Syria, what we would know as Syria, Aram. <clears throat> and there's, it's noted here there's, there's been a lull of three years without war between Aram and Israel. <clears throat> if you read back into, in, into like when King David was there, <clears throat> I'll go back to that reference that I made with Bathsheba. At the time, in the springtime, kings went to war. That was a normal thing to do. It was because you could, you could travel easier at that time. The kings didn't go to war in the wintertime because they couldn't move their chariots. They couldn't, the horses were more difficult to, to take care of them. It was cold. It was wet. It was, you know, it was nasty. And they didn't go. But springtime come around, and kings were ready to roll. And they would go to war. And that's what was taking place right there. So it's kind of, it, it, it is of note right here where it says that there was a lull of three years without war between Aram and, and, uh, and Israel, between Syria and Israel, or Aram and Israel, as it was called then. And, and, and so King Jehoshaphat of Judah, who's in the southern kingdom, meets with um, Ahab. Israel's decided it wants to go to war with Syria. And, and so they meet together, and he says, will you go with me? And Jehoshaphat's good with it. He says, yeah, let's go. My people are your people, your people are my people, and it hadn't been that way. I don't know what the deal is. It hadn't been that way all along because they've been fighting each other as well, but not during this time. So we've gone three years. Nobody's fighting. It's time to fight, right? So sometimes somebody just wants to pick a good fight, you know, just what it is. I had neighbors when I was growing up, Strattons. And they just wanted to fight all the time. And if there wasn't any fight going on, they'd just go pick one somewhere. You, yeah, they fought amongst themselves too, but that was just for fun. That was for practice. <laughs> that was for practice. <laughs> you know, some, some uh, that way. So here he is. Israel says, well, I hadn't fought in three years. I'm ready for a fight. I'm ready to, take, I'm ready to go to war. But he wants to have help to go with him. And, and so uh, Jehoshaphat is, is ready to go with him. He notes their brotherhood. And uh, he only wanted the, you know, the God of Israel to consent for them to go to war. 
Jehoshaphat asked the king of Israel to seek the Lord's answer on this. So here we go. In verse, um, verse 4, so he asked Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to fight uh, Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. But Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, first, please ask what the Lord's will is. Now, let's pick up right there. Um, Debbie, start with verse 6 right there. Read verse 6. Yeah, yeah. Things run through my head, and, and may have been no reference at all, but, you know, whenever, um, whenever Elijah stood against the prophets of Baal, there was 400 of those prophets that were of, of Baal, and now um, Ahab's called up 400 prophets of God, so to speak, and said, shall I go to war? What are you going to say to the, to the man who says, who controls your life? Really? Think I should go to war? Yeah, you got it. God is with you. You go get them. God's with you. March up there. The Lord's going to hand it over to you. Debbie, read verse 7 right there. Yeah, okay. This is just a simple question right there. Here is, you know, he gets 400 prophets. That's what it says. What my Bible says, the king of Israel gathered the prophets, about 400 men. Did, did you all, does you all say the prophets as well? But Jehoshaphat says, isn't there a prophet of God here? Um, we pick up, pick up from that point right there. Jordan, start in verse 8 right there, um, 8 and 9. Imla, yeah. Go ahead. Jesus did not say that Jehoshaphat, Jesus did not say that Jehoshaphat required, so the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, bring Martha's servant to Imla at once. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he said, yeah, there's one more, but he don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> he don't like me. He never prophesies anything good. He just... He, he just doesn't like me, so I don't want to. I don't want to talk to him. And now, it, you like to have people around you that like you, right? You, know, you always want those people around you that like you. And if there's somebody you know just doesn't like you, you don't want to hang out with them. You don't want to bring them in. You don't want to. You don't want to discuss with them anything like that. But here's what it is. So they're, they, you know, is it bring him on? Um, and so they do bring him. They they bring him and um, uh, and and uh, Micaiah's message that he that he brings to him. We, let me pick up in verse uh, 13. Kyle, do, do, um, do verse 13 and 14 right there. Here we go. Yeah. He, okay. He says, those who went to get him said, just agree with the king this time. Just agree with him. He wants to go to war. Just agree with him. And, and he says, well, uh, Derek, pick it up verse 15. Go ahead, verse 16. Go ahead. Okay, all right. So what does he tell him first? Go. 
Go fight. Go fight. But the king knows that he's lying. Why? Because he never says anything good about me anyway. He says, how many times have I told you? You just tell the truth right here. So what he says, here I see all these sheep without a shepherd because the shepherd is not with them anymore. In other words, if you go, you're going to die. That's what's going to happen. And so the king, verse 18, so the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you he never prophesies good about me, but only disaster? Micah goes on again. Now, here's what they're going to do. They're going to go to war. They're going to go to war. And, and here's what's going to happen. We'll lay it out this way. They, Ahab and, and Jehoshaphat, he talks him into switching clothes. Ahab's putting on Jehoshaphat's clothing and Jehoshaphat's putting on Ahab's. They're going to war. And Jehoshaphat is mistaken for Ahab because of the clothing that he's wearing. And they come after him, and then they find out that he's not Ahab. And they say, go away. They don't want anything to do with him. In the meantime, a wayward arrow strikes Ahab right in between the armor and mortally wounds him. And so we'll pick up on, on that one. Um, right there, verse 34, uh, Jordan, uh, this, this, this will be this, uh, where we understand this story. 34, 35, right in there. Arameans. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, 37, 38. Kyle, you want to read 37, 38 right there? Okay, was that not prophesied? That's what he was told. That's what Elijah told him. The dog is going to lick your blood in the same place where Naboth's blood was licked up. And this is exactly what happened. Now, um, 39 and 40, Derek, finish that off for us right there. Okay, again, what you have right there is just typical story. When the king dies, story's over. There's no, there's no record of parade or prominence or anything. He died, he's buried. Ahaziah, his son, takes over. That, and that's, that's it right there. Um, and we read about him. Uh, in verse, the last verses of there, and Hazaiah, son of Ahab, became king over Israel in Samaria in the 17th year of Judah's king, Jehoshaphat. And he reigned over Israel two years. Okay, he just lasted two years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He walked in the ways of his father, in the ways of his mother, and in the ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. He served Baal and bowed in worship to him. He angered the Lord of God, uh, Anger the Lord God of Israel, just as his father had done. And he was taken out. And that is the end of 1 Kings. So, Damien, you can advertise it next week that we're doing 2 Kings. Damien's been trying to beat me into 2 Kings for about a month now, and I've not been there yet. <laughs> he keeps 
So you'll be there. You're next. That's, that's what's coming next. And you're going to learn after Ahab's death. This, then Jezebel's going to go down. And, and then we're going to see if we're... Uh, Elijah becomes or is taken up and Elisha takes over and it's, it's a whole other movement that take, that's happening right here and, and so it's just kind of cool the way it all, uh, it all works how it's happening so there's just a number of things that are taking place right there so thank you all for being here tonight for all our readers tonight thank you next time guys bring your glasses because you're going to read all of it next time alright <laughs> let's stand together and, uh, and uh, close out in prayer We want to remember specifically Carly, who's suffering quite a bit. Carly's had a rough day from shoulder surgery. I, I sympathize with her completely because I know how mad it hurts. And, uh, and others as well. But we remembered earlier the young man that was in the wreck, that your co worker there, and, and others that are around. So let's, uh, let's close out in prayer. And, and, and Tony, you'll take us out tonight, would you? Amen. Amen. Thanks for being online with us tonight. Thank you all for being in here tonight personally as well.